Hello, this is George, and today I'm going to show uh, you how to test to see if you have OpenPy XL uh, installed installed in your Python libraries, um, and if not, uh, how you can install it. Because if you want to use my latest version of Trading Simula 18, uh, I've incorporated uh, this library to be able to create Excel documents and also to read from Excel documents. Um, so one of the key features that uh, was missing from uh, Trading Simulate 18 was a combined equity curve. So uh, this latest version uh, has a um, function that creates a spreadsheet and then dumps the, um, I think it's the monthly, yeah, the monthly data into the spreadsheet and then creates a curve of that, of that data. So you can quickly open it and see the uh, equity curve of the portfolio. So let's go ahead and get this, let's get, let's get this ball rolling. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to determine if I have OpenPy XL on this computer. Uh, I shouldn't. I deleted it. So, but who knows? So what you need to do is go to your Python, which is under the Start menu. I've got 3.7 on this computer. I have 3.8 on my laptop. Both work really well. Um, <clears throat> while I'm here, PyScriptor X64 is a IDE, very professional IDE for Python. Um, you can get it for a small donation. Uh, it's my go-to uh, IDE for Python. Once you get tired of idle, uh, you can move up to PyScriptor. And like I said, it's so easy to use. Uh, you may have to configure it for whatever version of Python you have, but I think that's pretty easy to do, and I think it's in the instruction manuals. But I think sometimes if you install it, uh, it'll automatically configure for you, so you'll have to play around with that. So I'm going to go ahead and launch. No, I'm not going to launch, launch idle. I'm going to actually launch Python. And that's, this is small, so let's see, can I grow this window? Yeah, we can grow it. I wish we could change the font. Properties, let's do font. Let's open it up to 20 so you can see it. Unable to modify the shortcut. Okay, there we go, don't know why I did that. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm running Python 3.7 here. I'm gonna go ahead and import uh, open Pi XL, and if it's there, it'll say you know it basically return with no error message. If it's not there, it'll give you an error message. Just see what happens here. Okay, module not found error. No module named Open Pi XL. So let's keep that let's keep that command prompt open. I'm going to pull it to the side here so get out of our way. Okay, so I got to get to my scripts folder um, and uh, find pip. Uh, the executable that installs libraries. Now, if you had when you installed Python, if if you had selected for it to modify your path uh, with the Python modules, uh, you wouldn't have to do this. Uh, my path was not modified, uh, so you may be able to just go pip install from uh, a, any command prompt. But let's just do it this way. And then uh, if, if it is installed, that's great. If the path had been off, it's great. If not, then you know how to do it this way as well. So I'm gonna go to my Python again. This time I'm gonna go ahead and go to 3.7. I'm gonna find out where Python is located. Uh, used to, it would be on the C drive, on the root directory. Uh, it's no longer there. They install it in, if you default install, it'll default it in a unusual, not unusual, but uh, in a deep folder. So let's go ahead and open the file location for this shortcut. And this is a shortcut. This is not the actual application itself. So what you've got to do is we got to get the properties. This is a shortcut. I go to the properties. Okay. And it'll tell you it is a shortcut right there. Okay. So I want to open the file location to where the shortcut points. So I do that. And lo and behold, here is my where my Python 3.7 is located. It's in George Pruitt App Data Local Program Python Python 3.7. Uh, I guess this is the new location for new programs to be installed. I'm, I'm not sure. But I need to go into the scripts. That's where my pip is. From there, I want to I want to launch a command prompt. Let's see if it'll do it. Okay. The beauty of this command prompt, if you do it from that directory, it pops it right in it points it to directly to whatever directory you were, you, you were in when you launched the command prompt. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to simply pip, and this is the install uh, script. Um, 
or uninstall. Use pip to install and then uninstall. So I'm going to install pip install open pi xl. So it's going out there on the internet. It's pulling in the package. Okay, everything is satisfied to do this. I think it's a pretty generic library package. I think it, it will install on any just any generic installation of Python. Uh, it's running the setup pi install right now. Uh, you're using pip version 18 more have 20.1. Most of the time you'll get the error message just saying you're just using an older version of pip. You may want to in, uh, upgrade that eventually. Uh, that's just what that's telling you. So now what I want to do is I want to go back to my uh, I want to go back to my Python. So I'm going to close this. It installed it. And I have this window open, but I'm going to kill it. I'm going to, because I don't know, I may have to re, I think you have to restart Python for it to read the new library. I'm not sure about that. But let's go ahead and let's run Python again. Let's change that font one more time. Properties. Probably give me some error message here. I'm going to go 20. Okay. Yours may not say that. I don't know why it's saying error updating shortcut, but yours may not say that. I'm just saying okay, and it seems to work. So now let's go ahead and import open pi XL. You know what's imported if you don't get an error message. Boom. Wow. That was kind of anticlimactic, but that's how you do it. Um, if 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 you if it wasn't working properly, uh, then you would have got an error message. Since it's it's there, I've imported it. It's there, so we can we can now start using it with the latest version of Trading Simula 18. Uh, thanks for listening to me today, and uh, hopefully you'll get the latest version of Trading Simula 18 and and have some fun with it. Thank you.